Good morning and viva Cinco de Mayo. I'm here today with the Louisiana State Museum and Friends of the Cabildo to tell you the story of the Louisiana connection to Mexico's great date, 5th of May. If I were to ask most Americans, have you ever celebrated Cinco de Mayo? They would say yes. I either ate Mexican food or I drank tequilas, margaritas, or fine Mexican beer. If I were to ask what happened on the 5th of May, many people would not be able to tell me the story. So what I want you to do as Louisianians is to understand why we should celebrate Cinco de Mayo even more than the rest of the country. After the Seven Years' War, when France ceded Louisiana to Spain, we actually became part of Mexico, or as they called it then, the Viceroyalty of New Spain. The border with Mexico after independence was the Mississippi River, and a few years later with the Louisiana Purchase under Thomas Jefferson, and then later with the Mexican War in 1848, the border with Mexico became the present borders. Now, post-Louisiana Purchase, Louisiana still had a strong connection to Mexico. During Mexican independence, which occurred in 1810 with the Grito de Dolores, announced by Padre Miguel Hidalgo, who unfortunately did not live long enough until 1821, to see Mexico become an independent country. The Louisiana connection to independence in Mexico actually comes through the pirates Jean and Pierre Lafitte of Battle of New Orleans fame. Here, the definitive history of the naval battles of the War of Independence of Mexico, we see the table of contents and the arrow focuses on a small chapter on the brothers Lafitte. And to give you an idea how Jean Lafitte died, here we have his obituary in the Gaceta de Colombia of 1823, stating that he died a hero attacking Spanish ships off the coast of Honduras, which at the time was part of Mexico. In the 1820s, roughly 50% of the ships coming into New Orleans arrived from Latin America, most of them from Mexico. And in the 1840s, a Mexican newspaper was exiled to New Orleans, and for six months, they actually published and set up shop in New Orleans, supplying Mexico with news. And now let's get to the Cinco de Mayo and the man behind the story. Benito Juarez was Mexico's greatest pre president. He was born in 1806. He was a Zapotec Indian. He was born in Oaxaca. He became a congressman, later a lawyer, then a judge. By 1847, he was governor of the state of Oaxaca. Now, at the time in Mexico, there were two basic parties. The conservatives, led by Santa Ana of Alamo fame, was for traditional power in a strong church. And then men like Benito Juarez, governor of Oaxaca, and Mechoro Campo, governor of Michoacan, were liberals, and they were for individual political and economic freedom. Now, Santa Ana had both men and others exiled to New Orleans. Benito actually lived here for 18 months, from 1852 to 1854. This image shows Benito making money by rolling cigars in the French market in the French Quarter. He lives here for 18 months. He and the Mexicans returned in 1854, and they implemented what is known as American in Mexican history as the Plan de Ayutla, getting rid of Santa Ana's government. They implement, these liberals implement the lays of, uh, the laws of reform, introducing freedoms of speech, religion, education, and assembly. And Benito actually is elected president in 1861. In the meantime, the liberals were attacked by the conservatives who had gone ahead with the church, created a monarchy, and negotiated with Napoleon III of France to bring over Maximilian, a Habsburg, noble to assume the government of Mexico. Now the French, Spanish, and English had loaned money to the conservatives, who obviously lost. And when they sent the bill to Juarez to collect the, the conservative debts, Benito said, you collect from them. I never borrowed the money from you. And England, Spain, and France decided to attack Mexico in 1862 landing on the Mexican coast on the Gulf of Mexico. At this time, Abraham Lincoln was fighting the American Civil War. He could not invoke the Monroe Doctrine in support of Mexico. 
And so the Mexicans were attacked in the city of Puebla, which is in between the coast and Mexico City, and the French were defeated. This battle, Cinco de Mayo, gave Mexico much respect in Europe, so much so that Spain and England wrote off the loans, keeping France the only country involved. Maximilian was finally abandoned by France five year, almost five years later in 1867. And a few months later, in June of 1867, Benito Juárez captures and has Maximilian executed, ending the French invasion. Benito is reelected in 1871, and unfortunately, he died of a heart attack in 1872. His legacy is great. His a motto that he proclaimed is the best known uh, worldwide: "Respect for the right of others is peace." And we here in New Orleans celebrated the memory of Benito Juarez by having a statue erected of him on Basin Street in 1965. And the images you've seen in the presentation, I hope you enjoyed them, were provided by the Louisiana State Museum Cabildo, the Friends of the Cabildo Spanish Class Program, Tulane's Latin American Library, and the small book Benito Juarez by Dennis Wepner. So I hope you enjoy Cinco de Mayo tomorrow. Tell your friends about this video. And if they didn't see it, you can tell them the story behind why you're celebrating. Buenas tardes.